everybody. Hi, good evening, everybody. My name is Eileen. I'm the Associate Director for Future Students um, at the University of Melbourne, and uh, I'm from the Faculty of Medicine, Dentistry and Health Sciences. So today, I'm just going to give you a really quick um, uh, rundown about the MD, and I'm going to screen also a video by one of our academic staff, who is the um, Director of the Medical Program at Melbourne University. Um, and he will be sharing not only about the MD, but also another of my academic staff will be sharing about the um, first year studies. So without any further ado, let me just um, show you um, where Melbourne University is. So you find it here at Melbourne University. We are right smack in the middle of the um, what we call the Melbourne Biomedical Precinct. So as you can see, we're surrounded by all the hospitals, and you know you will be really in in the area of um, research centers, the hospitals, and so you find it because of these partnerships that we have with the various institutions and research institutions, and also the hospitals. Our students actually benefit greatly from there. So you will see, for example, like you know the um, Royal Melbourne Hospital, the Women's and the Children's and um, also with the very famous Peter Doherty Institute, where you know, that's how they discover some of the tests for the vaccine for the COVID situation. And right in front of the medical building, you will see that we actually have got a new underground tunnel uh, uh, that is being built at the moment for a train that will be available very soon in about 2025. And so students can come right into the city, get up into the... Um, from the train and voila, that's where the campus is. So you find that these are some of our major clinical partners that you know, our um, students actually get the benefit of from our partnership with them, working really, really closely. And um, the new MD program, which we say is new because we have just re sort of you know, tweak the, ho the whole program to make it even more um, relevant to the current um, society. So you find that we are number one in Australia and 13 globally. And of course, the program is accredited. Now, a lot of you might be wondering um, what, how many places we have. So we have about 60 um, international places for the medical program out of about 350 students in total. So without any further ado, I'm just going to um, share the session by Professor Steve Trumbo. All right. I'm just going to change to the video. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to this webinar about the Melbourne MD. I'll begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land for which we're all meeting. I'm on Wurundjeri country and we pay respect to uh, Indigenous leaders, past, present and emerging, and also welcome Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people joining us tonight. I'm going to begin with a very brief presentation, hopefully, on the way the course actually uh, works, what it looks like, because we have changes coming in 2023. Melbourne MD is a four-year entry to practice medical course. So there are about 23 medical courses around Australia uh, and New Zealand. Uh, and uh, it's a four-year program set at professional master's level. University of Melbourne is the first medical school to switch from an undergraduate type MBBS to a graduate level master's program, MD. We are a research intensive university. So while we work give our graduates the very best clinical competence. We also have a particular focus on research skills. So we hope we set our students up for a career where they work as clinician researchers, if that's what they wish to do, so blending research with their clinical skills. And I think during the ICT pandemic, we've seen a number of building university graduates who are very active with research during the pandemic at a time when we really needed good science and good answers. The courses look like this since about, um, well, it started in 2011. And unlike most medical courses, we only have one year, which is spent on the campus there at Parkville, one year where there is a focus on the biomedical sciences and their application to medicine. 
students then go to the clinical schools for the second year, which is very much general medicine, general surgery, based in general hospitals like that in Melbourne and Victoria. The third year focuses more on specific patient populations like women, children, people with mental illnesses, in general practice, uh, aged care, and other groups like that, as well as a time when people can get their research skills prepared to do a project in year four, and then a final semester preparing to become an intern, so there's a year's compulsory internship after medical school, where you are paid to work as an intern, and then you get on with life, whatever the life you want to do. So that's the way the course has looked up until last year. There were some significant changes made last year in order to manage the impact of the pandemic. We're keeping some of the very best changes that uh, were able to be put in place last year, but obviously we're also uh, going to back to what was some highlights of the course that we had to suspend during the lockdown last year. The clinical schools I've mentioned, um, and uh, we sort of occupy the northern half of Melbourne. We have clinical schools at Western Health, at uh, Royal Melbourne, St Vincent's and Epworth. We have specialist placements at the Royal Children's Hospital, Peter Mac Cancer Centre, and the Royal Women's Hospital. We have the Austin Clinical School and the Mercy Hospital out of Heidelberg, and Northern Clinical School in the northern suburbs of Melbourne, where a huge um, proportion of uh, the population is living these days. So major changes coming to place for next year. There are no prerequisites for selection uh, beginning next year. Previously, for the previous 10 years, uh, you needed to have prerequisites in anatomy, physiology, and biochemistry. <coughs> That's no longer the case. You can come in with any background at all, not requiring prerequisite subjects. One thing that the pandemic uh, led us to do was to modularize the curriculum. So to move away from time inefficient lectures, uh, where you're sitting in a large lecture theater, copying down notes and moving more to online so that that can then be um, done at whatever time suits you. So you can spend more time doing appropriate things like being with patients, um, being with um, doctors, learning on the wards and those sorts of things. So not being as stuck in teaching sessions as previously. I had a meeting with the head of school, John Prince, today with uh, the Faculty of Engineering about articulating a Masters of Engineering with the MD as just one example of uh, where students might have a passion, for example, for biomedical engineering. They might want to be involved in cochlear implants or um, epilepsy implants or um, bionic limbs or whatever it might be, robots. Um, we're setting up a pathway where you'd be able to get, if you already have some background there, uh, there would be um, some uh, opportunity to intercalate, to join together a Masters of Bioengineering and to take one year off that program. So you'd be able to do it in just one extra year, as an example. Same with the PhD um, that can fit in amongst your MD if you want to do things together rather than end to end as has previously been the way. If there are questions about that, we can certainly spend more time about that. But probably the most significant change, the party piece, if you like, for the MD redesign is introduction of MD discovery. And what that means is that from each of the core subjects over the four years, we've taken a sliver or a slice and turned it into electives, but um, uh, proper uh, academically significant electives with um, 12.5% of the first two years, 25% of the third year, and then half of the final year being up for grabs. So you can do what you want to do, uh, so long as it obviously builds um, for your future career. The concept behind that is that the first year level is all about getting basic knowledge and skills in another area, be that everything from um, uh, child health in um, uh, certain countries, or as I've mentioned, um, bioengineering or something like that, or further into the biomedical sciences. The second year, when you go out to your clinical schools, there's a bigger focus on the clinical application of what you're learning to patient care, because we really want our doctors to be well-rounded with um, lots of different facets to their skill set, so they're more competitive in the market, uh, the employment market. Third year, as I've mentioned, is where you do spend time with specific populations like women, children, people with mental illness. So 
the uh, discovery subjects link in to those groups. And then finally, the fourth year, the pinnacle of the course is where you would create new knowledge through research or through uh, scholarly development of patient resources or, or something like that. So it builds throughout the course. The idea is um, that uh, build your own adventure. So if you want to assemble uh, your own discovery subject by grabbing a module here and a module there and putting together things that really interest you, you can do that, or you can take an off the shelf subject, which already exists within the faculty. It might be that you want to just um, have a quick sample of an area and um, flit about from different things, or you might want to have a deliberate thread in things like engineering or First Nations health or uh, pediatrics or whatever it might be, music, for example. Uh, and we are recruiting training advisors to help you navigate those choices because it's complex and it's good to be able to talk with somebody about the choices you're making to make sure you, you're aware of um, everything that you can do. But the focus remains, we will never move away from being a medical course that gives you a really quality core learning experience to make you the very best doctors you can be. Nothing changes from that. So that's what it's all about, discovery. Um, we like to believe, and we do believe, that it will give greater choice and will allow students to become better engaged with the medical course by doing things they're really interested in doing rather than one size fits all approach. And also it means that um, in what is becoming a much more diverse medical career than when I did medicine, um, when basically you were a doctor working with patients or not, um, there are now all sorts of other medical careers that um, might require skills in law or um, public health or whatever it might be. Um, and I guess my job in this is to talk to you a little bit about what actually studying medicine at Melbourne looks like on a day-to-day -day basis. So Steve has given you a really good idea of the big picture and the new um, MD pathway that's the new MD course that's rolling out next year. But I, I guess my chance is to talk to you a little bit about what studying medicine looks like from a day-to-day -day basis. Um, and obviously my perspective is very much around the first year of the program. So that's what I'll talk about a lot, but also give you a bit of a, an insight into what we look at for our medical students across the whole four years. So I think the first thing that I want to say is that on the left hand side of this screen is what we have traditionally used for teaching medical students and that's big lecture halls um, where students and you might be able to recognize yourself there either sitting down the front and eagerly writing down everything or um, perhaps in the middle and doing a little bit of um, online shopping while you're studying a little bit um, or perhaps up the back just enjoying the show uh, but we're moving well and truly away from that and on the right hand side is the lecture theatres that we currently have for our students and what we plan to have. So the way we're looking at medical education is really moving away from um, just sitting students in lecture theatres and talking to them about important things. Um, and where we're moving them to is to put them into the clinical setting so that they can really learn through experience and immersion. Uh, and that's one of the really exciting things about um, the, the changes to our program. So in terms of what you will learn as a medical student, we kind of think about learning in streams. So of course you need to learn some biomedical science uh, knowledges uh, so that you understand really well how the body functions under normal circumstances and how the body um, changes in response to challenges, whether that's through changes that happen naturally over the lifespan or whether that's through um, challenges introduced through disease and, um, and disability. Um, so you'll have a really good grounding in biomedical sciences and we do a lot of that in U1 but it is spread throughout all four years of the course. Um, we do a lot of work with clinical skills and teaching you the clinical skills to um, understand patients and, and, and work with patients to be able to ask them about their presenting complaints and to examine them and to um, figure out what's going on and develop management pathways with them. Uh, we also will teach you things around professional practice, and this is a really exciting part of our curriculum. People always uh, often assume that doctors are automatically professional, um, but we know that being a professional is something that you need to learn and to work on, and so we pay some attention to that as well. Um, we understand that you'll be working in health systems and particularly the Australian health system, which is a really ever-changing landscape. And so uh, we like to, to give you the skills to understand the systems and challenges that you'll be faced with in that area. 
we're really proud of our First Nations health teaching and learning, and it's developing over a number of years under some um, very strong leadership from Dr. Nari Blow, who is an Indigenous woman, as well as a graduate of the MD. Um, and we have some fantastic learning in that space. We also pay a lot of attention to research methods and being at Melbourne Uni, we, um, we are a research intense university. And so that's a real strength in our curriculum as well. Um, I think it's really important to be thinking about what's on offer outside of classes as well. And so this slide is just a, a sample of some of the things that you can get involved with as a member of um, our, our community of MD students. So we have a really strong student body at the University of Melbourne Medical Student Society, uh, and they coordinate a number of different activities to get students involved and interested. So if you have a passion that is part of medicine and part of your studying, then uh, we will support that and UMS will too. Um, so you can see we, we uh, work in the Teddy Bear Hospital, which is a, a fabulous experience linked into the Good Friday Appeal with the Royal Children's Hospital. We, um... Well, hi, everybody. Um, yes, yeah, so I've given the link on the, um, the, the chat. So please access that um, because just in sorry about the time factor. So just um, go online to have a look and complete the rest of the video. It is really interesting. So thank you. And I'll see you back in the um, chat room. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Have a great night.